Hi guys, welcome to my first video on my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to share with you all how I became disabled and the story behind it. So tune in if you want to keep watching. So when I was two years old, I got something called Vibrantophilus ataxia, which had paralyzed my whole left side of my body and had also swelled my brain. And I had nearly almost died. Like, it was scary. Um, I, I obviously don't really remember it, but my mom telling me about it, she remembers a lot of it. And she said it was the scariest thing ever. I was like a newborn baby and I couldn't hold myself up, couldn't hold my head up on my own. Like, I was super weak and I was like, my eyes rolled in the back of my head and it was bad. So, um, as I got older, like, I always had a funny walk and people used to judge me for it because I couldn't walk straight or I'd run into walls a lot and like, those are my fault. Like, I can't help myself. Like, I was still trying to like, get stronger from being, from being paralyzed at two. So, it was definitely a challenge and like, facing bullies, like, just attacking me all the time. So in elementary school, I had to sit like in the front of the classroom because I realized I was actually having kind of a hard time hearing, but it wasn't like bad. It was just like barely anything. And then um, as I got older, like my balance started getting better because of PT and I started like feeling better and everything. And then age 13 came around and it was like a week before Christmas in eighth grade. The year was 2014 and I started feeling really like tired and super like weak. And I just like didn't understand what was going on. And I was asking my mom if I could stay home from school because I was just way too tired and I was sleeping way, way, way too much. And I didn't know what was going on. And I went to the bathroom at a point and I fell over and my sister was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And so then I went right back to bed after that. And um, like later that night, we were like, my mom and my stepdad were trying to talk to me and I could not like process any words that were being saying, like any verbal speech at all. And it was actually kind of scaring me. Like my mom was talking so, so loud and I was like, trying to focus so hard on what she was saying and I just like couldn't comprehend anything and we had went to the hospital like later that night I think like Peace Health and um my mom was like I think she's having like brown encephalitis symptoms or something so when I was in the hospital at Peace Health they were like trying to talk to me and I still couldn't understand what was going on like I was super weak had to be put in a wheelchair because like I couldn't stand on my own and they had immediately like rushed me to OHSU in Dornbecker in Portland, Vancouver area. And I was honestly freaking out. Like I could have died again. Like I'm a miracle child is what people tell me. And I was in Dornbecker and like OHSU, they were doing a bunch of like tests on me when like all the specialists came in and everything. And we noticed that like my eyes were tracking super bad so they were like moving like this like constantly like they still do up to this day like this is what they do like all day and it's pretty frustrating because I have a lot of eye strain but um anyways so I had double vision in the hospital really bad um I was light sensitive super bad I was like pretty much deaf and um and I was still like I had really bad balance. So I had actually been in a hospital for like a week, I think, and I had to stay there longer because I kept like throwing up from being so light sensitive and they're like, she needs to stay here another night or something. And um, so then I finally got to go home and then it was finally like winter break from for school. And I just was like trying to rest as much as I could and everything and um, and then when my term break was over, we went back to school. And I just like, people were trying to talk to me and my friends got to see me again. And I was just like, so confused. I was like, I don't know what you're saying, but I'll pretend like I know what you're saying and just like nod my head. But they were like trying to talk to me and ask me questions. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. And I just like, it like broke me because I miss being able to like hear my friends and like, it sucked. Um, so in eighth grade, we decided 
okay, let's maybe try hearing aids for Holly. And so we did, we tried hearing aids in an FM system where like, I'll wear a hearing aid and the teacher wears like a microphone thing so that they like put the piece on their clothing and then I'm supposed to like be able to hear them through my hearing aids. But I noticed like it started, it was a challenge. Like I, nothing was really processing and it was really bad like yeah people thought i was ignoring them through my hearing aids when they were trying to talk to me and i was like no i literally can't hear you <sighs> telling the story is just, like so touchy because i've lost like so many abilities <laughs> so in ninth grade i was like um i was trying my best to do the best of my ability so that i could get good grades and everything and I never failed a class in eighth or ninth grade, and that was definitely the year was a challenge. So then the next year in 10th grade, I decided that I should actually try learning sign language because hearing aids weren't doing any good for me. And so I had the most amazing sign language interpreter ever for about three years from 10th grade to 12th. And she was the most amazing person that I could have ever met. And I'm so glad that she's my sign language interpreter. Like, she's my best friend. So, when I was learning sign language, um, it actually, beca school became so much easier for me and I was able to actually communicate with my peers. Although I had lost so many friends, like, people just kind of didn't want to try anymore to like try and talk to me because it was too difficult. Or like, you know, it just kind of like made me sad because I had so many friends before I was actually disabled and before I became visually impaired and hard of hearing and yeah, I, like I need help and people just didn't want to try to help me. I was also able to be like more included in like school events and not like miss out on as much, I guess. And it's it was honestly such a blessing to be able to learn sign language and to still know it to this day. I faced many challenges and obstacles through high school, but like no matter what I went through, I still just kept pushing, moving forward and like never gave up and you know, just try to live life at its best. And I just like couldn't be more than happy that um, and blessed that God actually saved me twice from dying. Like I'm so happy to be here and just have, have had the life that I have. And, it's been such a blessing to just be here and be me. Just remember to all of you guys who are struggling, no matter what you go through, um, always keep your head up and know that God's always with you and he's got you and just live life to your fullest and just stay positive and think on the bright side because I'm going through a lot myself and it's really hard for me to stay positive sometimes, but when you look on the bright side, you can be so much to people. You can be inspiration, you can be a role model, you can be so many things to people. And I've had so many people come up to me and tell me, you've made me want to be a selling interpreter. You've been the best role model to me through high school. And they could have not been more blessed to meet someone like me. And that honestly makes me so happy. And I'm so glad that I was able to share my story with you all. So make sure you guys tune in for part two of the video um, for more details on to like what abilities I've actually lost and the challenges that I face every day. Be sure to like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 